So it's been about a year and a half since I first discussed my feminizing HRT regime. Um, before I jump into it, I need to just tell you that I am not a doctor, I am not an expert, I am not an endocrinologist. If you have any questions about these sort of things, please talk to a doctor, not take me for at my word. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, what my endocrinologist and I have discussed and we're doing anything that I might be doing outside of what I've been told is not to be taken as medical advice from me. I will disavow any claim that I have provided medical advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So, I am currently on a daily dosage of <clears throat> of, um, not a daily dosage. It, I'm using two estradiol patches twice a week, so four patches in a week, giving me a daily dosage of 0.2 milligrams a day of estradiol. So I'm a little distracted here. Someone's shutting on my phone. Um, <laughs> there, it's a, it's about the Dawsinger. Stephen Dawsinger has been released, and they're celebrating, have a block party about it. It's actually pretty cool. Free Dawsinger. Who is free now? We're happy. Yes. Um, where was I? Yes. Um, <laughs> so. 0.2 micrograms of estradiol a day. These are 100 milligram, 100 microgram, so wait, 0.2 milligram, yeah. And these are 100 microgram patches, okay? So that's my estradiol dose, daily dosage. Um, don't get those terms mixed up, right? Uh, as my testosterone suppressant, I am still taking suprotonone acetate. Uh, Currently, I was taking 50 milligrams of CPA a day, but after nine months, I found that my libido had dropped off, and I spoke about my concerns to my endocrinologist. So together, we decided to cut my CPA in half to 25 milligrams a day, which is easy enough. It has that little crease down the center. I just break it with my fingers. They're just small little tablets, um, which is fine. So. At the same time, though, we were beginning a regimen of progesterone. This is Tiva progesterone. It's a form of micronized progesterone. It's bioidentical. Um, it, it's one of well, the safer ones, right? Micronized progesterone is not linked to any cancers. At least not the, nothing the, the um, menopause society have been able to link to in any studies. Or any of the other studies, uh, any of the other groups. Excuse me. <coughs> but oddly enough, CPA, saproton acetate, is also a um a progestogen, which is the same family of of hormones uh, hormones steroids, steroidal chemicals as progesterone. It's just not bioidentical. So with, when you're on CPA, they have to they have to monitor um, certain blood markers for signs of cancer, particularly um, indications of damage to your liver and such. So that part's fine. <laughs> I don't have cancer, at least not none of the recent blood tests ever shown that. But anyhow, but anyhow, I was doing tw I started doing 25 milligrams of CPA in addition to my 100 mg milligrams of progesterone and towards the end of that I started to get an increase in my libido which made me happy but it could it, it could have been more it, it was just not very frequent not very strong but it was there it was there so I, when I spoke to my endocrinologist again about it he decided to do some blood he decided to get some blood work done I checked to see where all my levels were in terms of my estradiol and testosterone. Um, and then, af then after that, I was started on 12.5 milligrams of CPA and 200 milligrams of progesterone. And the progesterone, I'm supposed to be on this now for about a year. And there's a requisition form I already have for after a year of taking this. 
uh, on my new regime to see where my blood work is and hopefully we get some good results but anyhow where was I yes at within a week of starting the new regime I, I caught the cove and I don't know if it affects metabolism enough or in a certain way but I found within a few days once I my started coming out of the uh, out, of, out of having cove um, my libido was I was having it quite strongly, quite frequently. So this is this was a positive in my opinion, but I'm really not too sure how it all plays out. Um, my blood results, my last ones there were 0.2 picomoles moles per liter for testosterone, and prior to that had 0 0.5, 0 0.7, while on point on um, 50 milligrams of CPA. So I'm not too sure why things went up. I, I'm not too sure if there are some confounding variables. Maybe the sexual binding hemo um sexual binding globulin sexual hormone binding glob globulin globulin. I can never get that name right. Takes me a bit. So maybe that is trapping some of the testosterone for some reason or maybe it's being used up and it's just not very high in the blood serum. I don't know. It's all speculation on my part here right now. Don't take it as any kind of hypothesis or theory. It's just, just speculation. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's a little, a little rough right now. Um, so yeah. So currently that's what I'm on. I'm really curious to see what the results of this will be at the end of a year. Uh, further news, my company that I'm working for, I'm currently working for, uh, while they have coverage for um, trans people in transition, some of the stuff they don't have, they don't have stuff for um, electrolysis, for example. But I've heard that some companies do provide coverage for electrolysis if you get an orche orchiectomy. And I wanted to find out from the new insurance company if they would cover um, electrolysis or if there was some hoop I had to jump through in order to get that to happen. The old one didn't have any coverage at all with Sun Life. This new one's with Manulife. I haven't had a chance to ask them yet, so I don't know what if any covers they have for that sort of thing and what hoops I have to jump through in order to get it but yeah I mean I, I'd rather have the vaginoplasty and all that all at once but the more I think about it if I have to get the one to get the other I want both anyhow so I would probably do it. But I won't be able to ask them until tomorrow. Hopefully I'll find some time. I, I'm really curious to see what they cover. And as long as I'm working at this company, I might as well take advantage of whatever coverage they might have. And I intend to. <sighs> So that's um <clears throat> that's where I'm at. All right, folks, I'm going to go now. Hopefully, this uh, wasn't too boring. <laughs> Bye.